welcome to this Final Cut Pro 10 training. In this session, I want to take a closer look at the interface. Final Cut Pro 10 is one window with three main sections. Apple calls them Organize, Playback, and Edit. The Organize section contains the event library and the event browser. This is where we view and organize our media. Playback means the viewer. That's the window in the top right corner. This is a context-sensitive window that displays both events and the timeline, which is the third section in the Final Cut interface. In this session, I want to show you some of the wealth of keyboard shortcuts, controls, and buttons in the interface, including hidden switches and control panels, and display options that allow dual monitors. This is the main Final Cut Pro 10 interface. It's a single window composed of three sections. In the upper right, this is the playback section. That window is called the viewer. In the upper left, this is your media section, composed of the event library and the event browser. And down at the bottom is the timeline. This is where we build our pieces, the, where the actual construction of our edit is done. Inside the viewer, we have a lot of different controls that we can look at. We can play it by pressing the spacebar and pressing the spacebar to stop. These two arrows take us back one shot at a time or forward one shot at a time. They jump from the in of one shot to the in of the next shot. These buttons take us left and right one frame at a time. There's a keyboard equivalent, by the way. This is the left and right arrow, and this is the up and down arrow on your keyboard. If you want to view an image full screen, click these upward arrows. Not only does it display it full screen, but it plays the video. To go back to the interface, press the Escape key. If you want to see a section over and over and over again, turn on Loop Playback. Keyboard shortcut is Command-L. Command-L will then loop whatever you're playing, if the entire sequence from beginning to end or from an in to an out or a selected range. These tools are like we had in Final Cut 7 with the Motion tab. This allows us to select a clip, rotate it, scale it. This allows us to crop a clip, adjust, uh, remove portions from the edge or the top. And this allows us to do four corner pinning or distortion. When we're done making changes, you just click the Done button and the changes are accepted. We'll talk a lot more about that when we get to the effects category later in this training. This allows us to adjust the scaling of the window. I can set it to 25 or 50 percent or 100 percent. Command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out, and if you need it to fit inside the window, just click on that and say Fit. But there's a hidden switch. See it right here? When you click on it, it allows us to do additional things. For instance, we could see just the red channel in a clip or just the transparency channel, which is called the alpha channel. There's no alpha channel here, which is why it goes all white. We can also turn on video scopes. Turn on video scopes, and there's three video scopes. There's a vector scope, a waveform monitor, and a histogram with a variety of different display options associated with the scopes. We can turn off scopes by going to this switch and say, hide the video scopes. We can also go to the switch and turn on show title and action safe. And title safe, which is the inner rectangle, and action safe, which is the outer rectangle, are displayed on the image. All of these options also exist inside the view menu. In the view menu, we can show color channels and show action and title safe and zoom in and zoom out. One of the new features inside Final Cut Pro 10 is the process of skimming. This is where you hold your mouse and just simply drag it without holding the mouse button down to be able to look at a clip. Well, skimming is either really, really great or really, really distracting. And Apple gives us the ability to turn it on or off. It's this button right here. Keyboard shortcut is the letter S. When skimming is turned off and we move our mouse over a clip, absolutely nothing happens. We have to do the usual click with the mouse to set the playhead and hit the spacebar to play it, spacebar to stop. When skimming is turned on by clicking this button and we move our mouse over a clip, we're able to see what we're moving our mouse across. So for those of you that like skimming, leave it on. And for those of you for whom it drives you nuts, type the letter S. The color of this blue skimming is on, gray skimming is off. And thinking of things to skim brings me over to the event library and the event browser. The event library lists all the hard drives that are attached to our computer and those hard drives that have event folders on them. 
once you've got your media selected and you're not messing with the event folders anymore, hiding the event library gets you some more real estate, and that's what this button does right here. It allows us to hide or reveal the event library. This portion of the upper left corner is called the event browser. This is where we're able to browse media. When we skim a clip, we have the option of simply skimming across a clip or adding additional information. The additional information includes the name of the clip and the time code of our current skimmer location in a small box that slides across the top of the clip. This box can be turned on and off either with a menu choice or a keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut is Control Y. The menu choice is up here in the View menu and it's called Show Skimmer Info to display it or Hide Skimmer Info to hide it. Again, the keyboard shortcut is Control Y. But you can also see timecode from this central panel here. This is like the main dashboard of the entire operation. It's got a couple of hidden features. This shows or hides the background task window. Background tasks include transcoding and rendering and exporting. Click on it once and it opens up the background task HUD, which shows the transcoding and calculations going on, or we're importing media, or doing media management, or rendering files. If you ever wondered what's going on, the background task window will show you. Close it by clicking the close box. These are the audio meters. As you play, you can see a small audio meter bouncing here. But I'd like to see it bigger. And the way you do that, Click on the audio meter, and the big audio meter panel opens up over here. Much easier to read and much bigger than we were used to inside Final Cut Pro 7. To hide it, click it again. You can also display it by going to the Window menu and Show Audio Meters. Keyboard shortcut is Shift-Command-8, opens it up, and Shift-Command-8 closes it. Now, I love keyboard shortcuts with the best of them, but I like this idea of being able just to click on the audio meters here to display it and click it to put it away. This time code window actually has some very cool things about it. For instance, if you wanted to click to a particular time, just click once on the time code window and type in the time you want to jump to. I want to jump to 5 seconds, 15 frames, and it takes me to 5 seconds and 15 frames. Click again, jump to, say, 15 seconds, it takes you there. Click one more time and say, I want to go back 20 frames. I type in minus on the keypad to go back 20 frames, hit enter. Click again, minus 30 frames or plus 30 frames, and it jumps you exactly the same way the time code offsets worked in Final Cut 7. They work the same way inside the timeline. And thinking of other things that are similar, we have a tool palette inside Final Cut Pro 10, but this one's hidden. It's right over here. There's our main selection tool. Keyboard shortcut is the letter A. For trimming, we have a trim tool. Keyboard shortcut is T. And a position tool. Range selection. Razor blades. A zoom tool. And a hand. We'll talk more about these as we get into editing itself. For right now, not only do we have the tools, but every single one of them has a keyboard shortcut assigned to it. These three buttons allow us to control whether we're doing an append edit to the end of the sequence, an insert edit into the middle of the sequence, or a connected edit where we can connect a clip on a higher track to a clip on a lower track. We'll again show this to you in editing. We can add keywords, which is metadata assigned to a particular clip or group of clips. We can also flag it as favorites or don't use again. If you want to import from a camera, click the Import from Camera file. It opens up the window that allows us to import media. We can select this to bring in whatever media we want. And then we have inside the timeline this control down here. There's no limit to the number of projects that we can have open inside Final Cut Pro 10 and there's no limit to the number of projects we can create and have access to. This opens up the project library. The project is not yet open. This is just a list of all the different projects we could look at. What's even cooler is if we grab the skimmer, we can skim across a project without even opening it. So if I'm trying to decide, is this the project I want to look at, you can skim it by opening the project library. 
When you're ready to go back to editing, close the project library and you're back into editing on the timeline. The project library allows you to look at all the projects that are stored on your hard drive. Hide it and you're looking at the timeline containing just the project you're working on right now. This allows us to view an index of all the different clips that are stored inside the timeline. It shows us where it starts in terms of this starts at time code 0, 720, 1323. We can select clips by dragging across and delete all of these clips. We can look at just our video or just our audio or just our titles clip. We can add tags and we hide it by turning this box back off again. The horizontal width of our sequence is controlled from this slider and the height of our clips is controlled from this switch. This allows me to see just the audio, no picture. A very small picture, lots of audio, 50-50 between the two, mostly picture, all picture, or just a straight line when I've got a really, really complex sequence and I'm just trying to see what I've got to work with and get it all to fit on the screen. There is a ton of detail here that's all hidden around the edges and all clickable in the new interface of Final Cut Pro 10. Final Cut invites an attitude of, what happens if I click this? Which reminds me that the number one interface rule for Final Cut 10 is select something and do something to it. All right, so maybe it's not as deep as I think, therefore I am, but inevitably you're going to want to say, how do I do X? And the answer is select something and do something to it. Select it and it shows up in the viewer. Select it and you can delete it. And that's because most windows and controls are context sensitive. Whatever you've clicked on, that's what you're able to manipulate inside that window or that control. One of the things I was struck by as I was researching this training is the depth to the interface. There is far more here than appears at first glance. Virtually everything is clickable. So be sure to give yourself permission to click on stuff and watch what happens. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching this Final Cut Pro 10 training.